Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother, Avis, and we're back again with another episode of What's the Word Wednesdays. So as we usually do, I'm going to throw up the logo. And once I do that, we're also going to put in the topics in the comments for today. But as each one of y'all are coming in, let me know, how are you doing today and what's the word? And with those topics for today, we're going to be getting into current events, religious versus spiritual, and how rituals, routines, and practices impact your everyday lives. What's good, family? What's going on? Official Frosty in the building. What's going on? Alvin in the building. What's going on, y'all? Good to see y'all in here. What's the word? Y'all let me know. How y'all feeling? Rocking out to some some still posts right now. And, and just a little random heads up, too, for all those that are in here, too. I have a little guest with me that might be running around. I don't know if you're going to be able to see him, but... Just a little, little, a little puppy around in here. So, just letting you know. What's up, Chris? Welcome. What's the word? Wednesday. Appreciate y'all. Yes, it's Wednesday already. That's what's up, brother. I'm glad that you're feeling calm. And yes. Half of the strength is already gone. We're moving on to the next thing. Interesting. So today's word is circular. Now you tell me how you feel about that word then, Frosty. How do you feel about the words circular? What is what is it? What is it bringing to you at least? Because we can think about it from multiple different ways. We can think about it in forms of geometry when it comes to shapes. Circular can end up be talking about how, you know, maybe things and concepts come around in a circular motion you let me know all right 30 more seconds then i'm gonna switch to the show song and then we'll get this started but y'all keep throwing in the chats how y'all feeling i appreciate it i appreciate the, the talking back and forth i really do very grateful for it I already know Dallas, you're not coming in just yet, my G. I just started. You gotta hold on, my G. But it's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you, though. Alright. Let's get it started. Yeah, um, um, yeah, Check it out, y'all. What's the word, y'all? What's the word? 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 I got skills galore. Once again, y'all, it is What's the Word Wednesdays. I am your host. Your brother, Avis, and this is episode 18 of What's the Word Wednesdays. So, with all of that being said, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for those who's going to be watching later. But today's show, going to get it into some more interesting topics for today. And I already know I got the brother who wants to jump in already. I got you, G. Hold on real quick. But today, the topics we're going to be going and getting into is we're going to be looking at current events, gonna be looking into what being religious is versus what's being spiritual as well as how rituals routines and practices impact your everyday life so those are the topics other than that we can still throw some in the comments y'all please i appreciate the interaction and just the reasonings and talks back and forth that's what makes the show much more lively than what it is so I appreciate y'all so much. Um, and with that going on, let's go ahead and start the first topic. 
What you got current events going on? Yes, brother. Yes, I got an intro, my G. We're going to be switching it up very soon. But yes, brother, I got an intro. But for the first topic, we got current events. And first thing I see before I start talking about anything, Chris is over here saying, is Cali shutting down? Honestly, Chris, it possibly can. I've, I've already, we've awaited this way back when, when they are talking about how there's going to be a second, if not even third wave of stuff coming. So to me, this was going to be inevitable, inevitable, especially due to what would be going on with the election and all of that. People going to be coming out. That gives them more data to be able to say that there's been a lot of people out and exposed and around each other so that it, there's, there's going to be a huge spike. A lot of this is very predictable if you're watching and observing. But as of right now, Chris, I don't think... I don't think Kelly's on a lockdown just yet. I haven't I haven't heard a word. Like I can look it up real quick, but I haven't heard a word about there being a lockdown in Cali just yet. The only things I've been really hearing more so about when it comes news wise, which we've already talked about, really is about these close mandates, not only for a face mask, but we looking at these vaccines um, being pushed, especially to those undeserving communities already before they're even done yet. So we got that going on. So they're trying to push that vaccine real quick. They, there's a few companies that already have a few vaccines and they're trying to get it to the, to the public roughly around somewhere April, maybe into early May. So just be on the lookout for that, y'all. But I see that you're going in on the comments. So what's going on in Arizona then, Chris? It's like out here the toy paper is going again? Really? <laughs> That's what happens when we start we start fearing fearing everything and all the decisions. People go out and fear buy and just start literally just thinking the worst and stuff is gonna happen when literally you I mean Nevada, sorry. But literally all you need to do is still buy either a week or two weeks worth of whatever you're going to be going to the grocery store just get one person to go do what they need to do you don't need to be buying months on end of toilet paper especially for those who are at a disadvantage and are not able to get to you know markets and other different places to get these supplies because some people live in food deserts they live in places where their closest supermarket or their closest store might end up being about 10, 10 15 minutes out of their town or out of their city. So that's interesting, Chris, that you talk about that. And that's rolling back up, rolling back out again. Ha, toilet paper rolling back out. But as of as of other affairs that's going on current events wise y'all have anything else i've mostly just been hearing a lot of talk of just about the vaccine and especially um i think it's governor cuomo which that applies to new york i don't know about the one in cali but what they're rolling out a thing um governor cuomo's rolling out a thing where all those people in new york they're gonna make sure that everyone definitely gets vaccine when that time rolls around to have it so that's interesting that's all i have to say and once again we don't know we don't know how honestly they can tell they tell us that Specifically, I think it's the Pfizer's vaccine is supposedly like 90% up to 94% effective. But if you look at the trajectory of how long it takes to show that a vaccine is inherently safe, that usually takes within a span between 10 to 15 years. So you got to be careful with what your picks and stuff. What's up, Twigs? What's up, brother? What's the word? Good to see you up in here, my G. But besides besides that, that's that's really all the talk I've really heard about. It's just really been about this vaccine. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Al Pacino. The SpaceX. They did launch. I, was it specifically in Florida or was it here? Because... 
Well, where where I, where I currently live, I live very close. SpaceX is basically made home within within our city. But yeah, SpaceX launching again out in the space. I'm not too too. I, I I seen the article, or at least I seen the headline about it, but I didn't read much more into it, so I'm not too sure how how relevant that actually you know comes for us right now. Really, I'm not too sure. Well, I see right now there's more breakouts. Um, New York is closing public schools because of the breakouts. What else? Let's see. I'm just looking like I'm just scrolling down some of the stuff. It was Florida. Okay, see, I do. I remember just little bits and parts. A little bit, a little bit. I'm grateful. Hmm. But, yeah. <coughs> I guess that they're still having some some talks and things of the votes and everything um i don't know if trump has you know conceded or whatever else is going but all i know is the rollout to to attack this pandemic is still it still has not been addressed so we got that a lot of that going on as well as you still have people who was still restless from the previous or y'all can let me know but it seemed like to me and this is just from my own observation and what i've been watching did we ever come out and this is this is only to speak to those who are out here in cali i don't know how it's going on in different states but out here in cali to me it seemed like we we never really came out of the quote unquote lockdown like just stuff just just open but not like it was open but people were still in their houses and like they'll go do some stuff but then they'll still be at home so i don't know technically if we were ever off of a lockdown lockdown like that because it was never really officially announced people just started people got tired it's they're getting so restless to a point where it's just like forget it like i've been in lockdown since what march and it's already towards november almost december literally almost about what nine months if not more been in lockdown or like a quote-unquote lockdown and then saying there's gonna be another one coming it's too it's i know i know there's too much for some people to be confined in a place like that yeah yeah, the restlessness definitely is. It, that definitely is a problem. It's not letting people be able to do what they can. And literally, that's where people start being like, you know what? Forget it. I just want to go out. I don't care of the consequences. I don't know. All this number of different things that can affect the outspread of this as well as mm, being able to curb this pandemic and things going on. Okay. Now I just I'm just looking behind me. I got a little buddy with me just laying down right now, so we're good. He's not moving right now. True, not taking responsibility. You know, as long as you as long as you are practicing social distancing and you have your mask and you do this and you do that, you shouldn't worry about me. We have those are the thought process thought process or processes that we have from folks especially especially different folks who have a lot more power than others you know quote unquote quote unquote the dominant culture so you can get you 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 can lose at the end of the day is, is a lose lose when it comes to a lot of this stuff when somebody has a closed mindset and has a perspective on one thing it's like why why should i i'm worried about me why well, I got worried, really worried too much about you. Just stay away from me. But, you know, that that mindset can be very damaging. And that's why we've seen a lot of the effects of it now. So just just be safe on your own, for yourself. Do what you got to do to end up being safe. If you know all the protocols of what you got to do, clean, wash like you normally do. Make sure your health is all in right. Practice exercise and whatever you end up doing to help you, you know, build up your defense system then you're good to go so just keeping that in mind what's up jenny how you doing welcome to what's the word wednesdays
We just in here just talk about current events and things going on. If you guys got anything else, or if you all have anything else, please drop them in the comments. Please do. Okay? We still talking about some other current events going on. But yeah, yeah, Jenny, not this one this this stream is not gonna be more so me freestyling. This is more so of a just uh convo talks back and forth with um, folks coming on and speaking their perspectives. So my after show I can do that. But yeah, that'll be within about another hour or so. But yeah, stay standardized. Do it. Now Living and learning. That's all I've been doing. I appreciate it. I've been not getting as much quality sleep as I want to. I'll show y'all on the after show why I haven't been getting as much. And it's not just only because I have a little new guest with me for for a little bit. But it's, it's definitely different. But thank you for asking. Right. Y'all got anything else when it comes to current events? Mostly... Like I said, it's just mostly been I've been hearing talks about the vaccine and when that is going to be coming out. New York more so having a rollout of what they're going to try to do when it does come out. Um, the projection of how many people to be vaccinated, which is roughly around um, 1.3 um, billion of the population is supposed to be around April to wherever. Um, also, just the talks too, if there's going to be another lockdown and stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, I have a little I have a little dog with me. It's not mine. It's not mine. It's it's a friend of my mom's. It's their dog. We're watching it for for a little while until until they come back in into town and stuff. So yes, I have it and it just been staying around me. It's a puppy, so it literally just moves, jumping, waking me up all different hours of the night like it's it's like having a little baby for sure but yeah i'll show y'all later i'll show y'all later sleeping right now which i'm glad because i thought i was gonna be moving around a lot during the show but that being said if y'all have any more other topics when it comes to current events please throw them in the comments as we're moving to the next one so with the next topic I want y'all to also have your input too, so please do not do not be afraid to come on and to, to throw your perspective on it when it comes to this, because honestly, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just us having great dialogue, great convos and reasonings around stuff. But the topic I'm talking about is, you know, what the difference is between religious and spiritual. And are they one and the same or do they have what 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 makes them distinct from each other and could you be religious and not spiritual or could you be spiritual and not religious or can you be both so that's that's the topic at least right now that we're getting on so if any of y'all want to throw anything in here please do but when it comes to being religious, I'm just looking up and I'm going to read just the definition so we can at least just get the definition from what Webster says and then we'll conclude and continue with, not conclude, but we'll continue with the, the dialogue with it. So Webster says that religion is the state of a religious, a nun in her 20th year of religion. So that's interesting as well as the service and worship of God or the supernatural. Also, we have um, a commitment or devotion to religious faith or observance. So this is talking about still religion. There's like multiple different definitions. We have a personal, a personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs, and practices. And then we also have a cause, principle, or system of beliefs held to with ardor and faith. So that's for religious. Before I even get into the spiritual part, let me see what y'all got going on. So we have Chris says, religion refers to a group and spirituality is associated with an individual journey. I like that. Yes, yes, yes. All correct. Religion is institutionalized versus spiritual, which is more inward and personal. I, I, I agree with y'all wholeheartedly when it comes to a lot of that. 
because I can definitely, I will talk about my own perspectives when it comes to that, when we continue and just tell you at least my journey and path when it comes to this whole thing of religion and spirituality and being able to figure out the two. But yes, I agree with both of your points that you have right there. Now, we got that for religion. Now for spiritual, so some of y'all is already saying it already. So we have one, one of them saying concerned with sacred or religious things, refined, sensitive. And another one, if you're using it as an adjective, it says of, relating to, consisting of, or having the nature of spirit, not material, supernatural. So spiritual power in a sense of concerning with or affecting the soul. So being like a spiritual guide, are you having that spiritual growth, that personal inner growth as you all were speaking about? Not concerned with material or worldly things and of or belonging to a religion, sacred. So spiritual practices, spiritual music. And another part of it, it also says a religious folk so song of African-American origin. So I get it, like they would call Negro spirituals. Okay, I get that, okay. Also, a work composed in imitation of such a song. So, in English, once again, we have so many multiple different definitions. So I just wanted to at least throw them out there. But I already like the perspectives and what y'all have already put down in there because I do agree with a lot of that that you put there. So, when it comes to me distinguishing between what spiritual and what religious is once again i agree with y'all when it comes to religion that is um it's a man-made construction it is once again it's institutionalized it's basically through the eyes and the lens and the perspectives of men women and humans it's not necessarily not gonna say it's not focused on God, but we have a we have a a middleman when it comes to um, religion. So you have the pastor, you have maybe a deacon, you have a priest, you have someone that's particularly the middle person to you reaching that perspective to you know God and everything. What's going on, Kudin? What's the word? Thank you for coming in here, brother. We're just talking about on the topic of being religious versus what's being spiritual. Let's see what what Chris got for us to say. The co-host that's up. I started, it's almost been about 30 minutes, Kudin. So it's been about 30 minutes, almost. But once again, when it comes, when it's coming to me thinking of at least being religious, it has to do in an aspect of it being um, a man-made, institutionalized things where you spoke on it being a lot more focused on being within a group and a congregation and how that goes. But what's up, Chris? Hey, Calvin. <laughs> what's the word? Welcome. I guess the As word always. is religion tonight. Yeah. I was just, I just felt, I was just feeling like, you know what? I think it's a really good time to definitely touch on those two because they're either used interchangeably mm -hmm. or, you know, there's a big misconception when it comes to, you know, spirituality and mm -hmm. how other folks also look at, um, you know, religion. So that's all I just wanted to just touch on that. All right, what you got? I just wanted to jump in because like, I like this topic because when I was taking art history, um, I noticed a lot. You know how, like, at Sarah, we got a lot of um, history on, like, the church and everything. Yeah. But I felt like a lot of things were, like, missing. And mm. my studies in art history, it kind of filled in that, like, objective, like, viewpoint. Mm. Um, because re uh, religion, like, Christianity specifically... Yeah. The leaders, that was basically, they were government before um, mm. before America came around and now we have this kind of like government. But they were, the, they were like, the church was also the government. That's why mm -hmm. uh, out here in America, we have like the separation between church and state because we're supposed state. to be mm -hmm. free or whatever, you know, from that. But everywhere else, you look at like, especially Europe, um, a lot of the 
artworks and famous pieces that we know were like commissioned by the church so um it also has like a an effect on the perception i don't know if you remember that one painting that was in was it the sistine chapel no um no at sarah um oh oh, and, like oh. the 400 building was it it wasn't in 405 so it must have been like in room 400 miss anderson oh, okay classroom. is that, like, is that a little small chapel on the side over there right yeah and it has like the the it's the same like picture but it's the man on his deathbed and like on one side it has, like, oh that's the la the like the final rites or something yeah and then mm -hmm. like but how terrifying the right side that's true that i like that it's like that's it was meant to be that perspective you know what I mean? So yes. I just thought it was pretty interesting because I thought um, I'd share a little bit of like the art history side to religion and mm -hmm. you follow the money. Like, you know, like we watch all these like shows or even like real life, like you look at the institution, look at the organization and then you follow the yeah. money. It'll tell you who the real like puppet masters are. Mm. So, like same with like from an art history perspective you look at the art who was the commissioner yeah who wanted these things like you know <laughs> what perspective was being pushed so that's why i think when i think of religion i think group i think government i think like yeah yeah it's not on the individual level you can have a spiritual you can have an individual spiritual like journey within the group and yes. that again no one can take that away from you that is your yes. spiritual journey but that's not your religious journey your religious journey is everything mm -hmm. with the group mm. you know what i mean yeah so i just wanted to like i don't know speak on that a little bit <laughs> no i'm no i'm <laughs> grateful you I'm, I'm i'm grateful you did because i mean i wasn't even thinking in terms of you know not only just like the art history that you brought into it that helped you fill the holes too but like yeah just like once you reminded me too of it being it was a part of like you know government it took me back to um what was that king henry like the seventh or something is one of those one of those king henry's where that's where that that bruh there's so many of them i'm just saying at this point like it could have been a king henry the 35th for all i know but Literally, it was that point where I think he was trying to marry some. It was something in between where basically they 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 split. They did a schism. That's where I first learned about the word schism between the um between the church and you know and government or those who were ruling. So like you you made me you know reminded me about at least that point in time when it came to that to really think about like okay, you know at its at its true not its true but from its conception you know has as religion you know stuck to what supposedly is supposed to be doing or did it become commodified which mm -hmm. i mean we can speak on especially Money. nowadays seeing how it can be commodified and has it has it done exactly the the opposite of what it's supposed to be doing mm -hmm. which i agree with you when it comes to you can definitely be religious and you can be spiritual at the same time because once again spirituality does have to do with that individual yourself, of you soul. taking that that you know that path but once again religion that's what we're talking about you're within an institution you're within what she said that group congregation you know you the body of christ wherever you know i'm not i don't know much about any others like with the quran allah however else you know just within that group and how that ends up working and there's um there's set there's actually set rules principles and practices that you must abide by to be a part of that group in the religion but when it comes to spirituality it's once again it's individual it is not necessarily a set rules and laws and levels that you need to that you need to get through to be like okay now that you've done this now you have to move to level two it's you learning about your own self and your own growth and figuring out where that's supposed to go because mm -hmm. my spiritual journey could look completely different from chris's spiritual spiritual journey same thing with being different from kundins and anybody else that is in here too so i definitely I agree with your sentiment when it comes to that mm -hmm. um i will say this as as I've been able to not only study my own history and really come to learn a lot more about what 
you know, the core of what religion is supposed to be doing, which a lot of the religions really just packing together a message of basically being, you know, being more so not only not just righteous, but being I'm a good person and living, you know, a good a good life where it comes to different standards and stuff and just showing love in that particular case to everyone. But where the, the differences come in is about, well, this is the way you have to do it. This is the way you're supposed to do it. This is the way, how do you get to that? There's just multiple different ways. And for me, it got to a point where it's like, there's, I, I get it. There's not, it, there can't be no one size fits all because literally if I was born in India, you were born in, you know, Egypt or any other place like that, would you would you think that you would end up being Christian, Catholic, or any of those particular sorts? It almost seems like, and at points and times too, as a kid, you're born into religion. Yeah. Versus, yeah. versus like going oh, out, like it's just a yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it got to a point for me that I I began to notice that a lot of, and I will get to that because I love when Coonan puts his stuff up in there. Um, it got to a point for me where I started questioning a lot of, you know, what was the purpose behind it? And then mm -hmm. being like, okay, if the purpose is behind to really help build and be, you know, a good, in this particular case, I only speak on Christianity because of the fact that that's where I was as a Christian. I was Christian, at least practicing, but not anymore. Um, but the whole idea of how, you know, you are to be this, um, you know, be Christ-like, which I think is cool. Like, you know, it gives you a set in rules of right. like, at least a way, at least it gives you a structure to know. Exactly. And how to behave. For, for me, for me, when people also broke down, at least when it comes to the Bible, so I'm not disrespecting anybody to feel disrespected by this, you know, to each his own on you. I'm just going down my experience and how it came to me. But when people broke down the, the acronym for the Bible, it just made me think a lot more like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, the, basic the acronym for the Bible is basic instructions before leaving mm -hmm. earth. What's the first word? Basic. So that doesn't mean that it's intermediate. Doesn't mean that it's advanced. Doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. It yeah. is the basic instruction. So it gives you at least a foundation. And mm -hmm. then from there, you can figure that out. And that could be with any other same thing with the mm -hmm. religion. But once I started noticing a lot of my que the questions that I was asking wasn't being answered. It was just mostly like, oh, just look at here. Or like, no, that's what it is. Or you would see people who were checking. We always talk about it. I can be hypocritical. I know that. But I would see it very, you know, very badly to a point where it's like, okay, then, then what does it mean to be a Christian? And then why are people supposedly say that they're Christian, but they're not acting Christian? But they only do it one day out of the week or strength. And then they go back to their day and doing whatever. I know that we're sinners. I know. So it, to me, it got to a point where some, at some point in time, too, people weren't taking accountability. And yeah. that's where I was like, okay, like if you really look in the Bible, you'll see what's going on, brother Andre in the building. Another legend. What's up, my G? Welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays. All right, go um, on, Chris. I see you got something going. Go ahead. I think. Um... And then I got to get to Kuna's point, too. Yeah. Stories. I think it's because we're so removed from the actual like conflict and the struggle because yeah. you know the actual war aspect the, um, and that was like what the crusades and like it's a little we're bit, bro. so, far, we're little so bit. far removed from the yeah. actual conflict and the struggle I mean mm. yeah, there are some countries that are not like unfortunately like the whole Israel that area you know yes. that is like a the war that's been impending since you know Iraq was Mesopotamia and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> like um, so that you know I, at that point I think you know we're so removed we can't see so it's just like oh, okay well I just know to do it because I was told to do it because we're supposed mm -hmm. to do it. There's no mm -hmm. real actual and can, like and can you really say um impact or like yeah no i was i was i was gonna say i was like gonna no say another commitment. point but you're good keep going keep going let's see all right let's see what conan got real quick and we'll come back all right by the way the bahali and i'm gonna say that completely wrong sorry faith does not allow my individual priesthood nor church-like gatherings they have um democratized it by electing a council of nine advisors for each city, religion, 
country and the world. Mm. See, like once again, like I was speaking on, it, it's when it comes to being a religion, there's, there's different sets and rules and you know practices that you need to follow to be a part of that so it's like okay if you don't if you don't give your 10 percent of tithes if you don't you know pray to the to the east near the big cabal or whatever it ends up being you know five times a day or wherever it may end up being like you can't technically say that you are practicing the particular you know religion or faith that you're that you're in so it's it's definitely it's definitely an interesting interesting take when it comes to a lot of that it's in a, in the aspect of when it comes to religion so i'm not saying that oh religion's all bad and anything is wrong with it for me with everything that i look into that we all look into it's you take on you i want you to take on the reasoning why you do what you do and what you practice or why you believe or know what you know so that when you come across wanting to have once again we have talks convos whoever it is you know what your why is and if somebody else is able to really understand that they'll respect it not being like oh, okay you're christian and i'm i'm muslim or i'm muslim or you know i'm jewish so you know we don't really get together like that it's that's not the particular case but that's one of the that's one of the downsides of least religion is that it is it, it's, it's used to be very divisive and basically be dividing people so and the reason why i say that is i have I, so I give mm -hmm. you an example, and Instagram's hating on you right now. So for me, this was an experience I had, and I actually was um, grateful for it. And and it made me see a little bit more like, oh, so this is how, like, you know, the differences between religions really goes and how you can't really com not compare but, you know, find the common, you know, or the similarities. So back in college, this was my, my sophomore year. I, I studied abroad in um, in Italy. So I was in Florence, Italy for about three and a half months. And during that time, it was actually during the time where they were about to elect or they was just having a new Pope come in. I think it was Pope Francis, whoever was the next Pope to be at that time. And a few of uh, my roommates, we all traveled to the Vatican to actually go see St. Peter's Square, all these other different places, see the Sistine Chapel and stuff was actually open and all of this. And my roommate, he he loves to ask a lot of questions and he's not necessarily tied to any, you know, religion. He's maybe agnostic, wherever you want to end up, you know, calling the term. And so he decides, you know what? Like we see a few cardinals or like, those like priests outside of the um <laughs> out of the Vatican like why don't we go ask questions and have a you know re a religious you know discussion so he goes and approaches these three um either practicing priests or one of them it had a red to me look I remember seeing red so it was like a cardinal I may be completely wrong or not but long story short to the story is he had a combo and they started saying some very similar things, but was saying one of them was saying like, no, this is the only way we can do it. But he's like, well, what about this? And then I had came in and I was like, you know what? Y'all actually talking about the same point, like right here. Y'all have very similar things. Like, do you see that? And we're like, no, no, I don't. No, it's not. So I was kind of just like interesting. So it's like once you get that in your mind, like you're on this side and that person on this side, like there, the only way you can really see each other is like, yeah, there's a wall there. Acknowledge that there's a wall there. Y'all see the wall. Y'all know that's what the wall is in common with you guys, but you ignore not to see it. Mm -hmm. So it just made me really start seeing a lot more, only just why I was like, okay, you know, religion can also use so, be so divisive, so you got to be careful. But yeah, it is look. definitely, it is definitely you. Uh, let's sections. see. Yes. Uh, let's see. I once heard a religion is just a sect that was accepted by um, popular culture. Yeah, like those, those are like what, like, yeah, like a religion or order. Like those to me, like almost gets close to like a different order because then there's, there's various different um, religions and some religions were technically actually philosophies but the reason why they were turned into religions is because of the followers and they continued on the footsteps of what that 
you know, mm-hmm. figureheads, you know, religious pra- or spiritual practices were. So it almost seems like for me yeah. too that like religion, you know, birth came birth from, you know, spirituality and like a lot of the different spiritual systems. And that's why it has a link into being, you know, spiritual, but it loses sight because of the fact that you're under and you're in a box of a particular, you know, label. So I'm Baptist. You're you're seven let's, day um Advent, Advent, Adventist. But, but go ahead. Um popular culture yes our our american culture yes derives from like christianity even though we say this is like a free land and you can believe and practice whatever you want like the the roots were from different sections of christianity because you have like the quakers you have like the puritans um Mm -hmm. you know those are the different sections um that were yeah essentially practicing the same thing but in different ways they express yes. you know puritans were a lot more um like conservative if we want to use like those political terms in there too yeah. <laughs> you know very reserved very god-fearing very like you can't do anything yeah because um doing anything of earthly is like you denying you know secular god. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you have, like, the Quakers who are a little bit less that way. And then, like, it also ties back into, I don't know if you remember our senior year, just going into, like, the history of the church, like, tracing the tracks from Catholicism and then the subsections. Yeah. So it's all, there are always different factions. Of, you know, I, I'm just speaking on Christianity again, because that's also was my main upbringing as well. And that's mm. what I have to compare it to. There was nothing else because that's a, a part of it too. The upbringing yes. and the teaching. You don't learn outside. You just learn what is uh, Give to <laughs> what is presented to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's like they're the biggest, like, they're the biggest gangs of them all. <laughs> <laughs> gang, gang, basically. <laughs> all right, let's see. Kunu's Kunu in You go on the wrong block. Right. Yeah. So religion was often colonized by capitalists and politicians. That's why you still got political terms you can use. And then used to manipulate others and colonize their lands and convert people often by force or bribery. Yes. Big example that I use a lot. Why do we have missionaries in Christianity? What do the missionaries come and do? Some and I'm not trying to just bash only in Christianity. This is just my perspective of a knowing. Like I said, a lot of these mm-hmm. things if you're you just have to be aware of what you're doing and what you're practicing and know why you're doing it and watch all the different pitfalls mm-hmm. and the supposed you know pharisees and just those people mm-hmm. that you need, you need to watch out for but a great right. example of that is when a lot of uh, missionaries went to africa and there's a at least there's a an african at least writer that i know if not you know historian um but i think it's um is um Jomo um, Kenyatta, but like he basically had a quote where he's talking about like you know the missionaries and them came over to the land they had they came over to the land they had the Bible we had the land and then before we knew it that we had the Bible and they had the land so it mm-hmm. it, it came to a point where just like you're talking about Kundin that it was really it was used really to you know colonize take mm-hmm. people's lands and convert them and to be able to not only be you know knowing of that religion or whatever that was but to be more civil and to practice Mm -hmm. these things to be Mm -hmm. more of a human because you can be looked at and seen as a savage because you didn't have an organized type of way in religion where exactly had no explanation for why you were the way you were yes yes Mm -hmm. and then that's the reason why Mm -hmm. exactly you get you can get brutalized Mm -hmm. because of the fact that well you know in the bible there is actually parts where you know there's things about slaves and it's Mm -hmm. all i say people is just read (laughs) know what you get yourself into just don't just don't take everything that's given to you it's flawed scammers they completely flawed but it's there are some flaws in the reasoning yes you know, they use it to justify these are my mm-hmm. reasons why I feel this way, why I feel I can be forceful. Yeah. It's some it gives a foundation. I don't know, it's something to stand on. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. They did have organized religions, but Christianity exists in in service of white supremacy. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I mean, it was it's it's just because, like I said, and I agree with your point. Um, CT. Yeah, going back. That's how it was just used. It's 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 a mechanism. I think Freud, and this is going into psychology is random, and then don't worry, we're gonna get to spirituality because I know we've been going heavy on religion, but. You know, Freud even said that um, religion is the opiate of the masses. So literally, he was saying how literally religion. Oh, is that's used. Mr. Barnes. Hi, Mr. Barnes. Wait, what? <laughs> that's Mr. Barnes. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I did not know. That's crazy. That's what's up. And Mr. Barnes is yes, Calvin, if you didn't notice. But um, literally. <laughs> Is um, Freud said that religion is the opiate of the masses, and how literally you can get you know very addicted and you know intoxicated into religion to a point where you can become what we what a lot of people not necessarily like, but very um extremist on one side when it comes to religion, and that's where all reasoning is thrown out the window. So you can end up saying, okay, how how do you know that um how was Noah able to bring two two you know kinds of animal of each sex and put them onto this big old art okay where is that art nowadays you know how did he go all the way to you know alaska and go grab like two three penguins or whatever it may end up being and able to keep them on there with also you know dogs cats whales all, all these different types of animals and everybody's able to be you know all cohesively no problems no yeah. issues and you got a lot of food for every single different animal you didn't kill any of the animals you have food for yourself as well as had all shelter and everything that was needed for 40 days and 40 nights so it's like you break all of that down and then you know this is because the reason why i'm saying christianity is because that's what i know most of i know a bit of catholicism mm -hmm. i know a little bit of mm -hmm. um you know the catholic faith but the thing is i went because i went to a catholic school mm -hmm. but i right. wasn't catholic so i don't know as much the only few differences i know is that within christianity there's not much of what you have the saints and everything else they don't we don't in christianity we wouldn't necessarily worship and have different prayers for like you know not hail mary but like all these different types of um prayers for each like angels not um all the different like saints of that like nature a, i think catholicism is more literal Mm. It takes it from a literal standpoint. And then that's kind of why you had those, uh, you know, the Calvinist top yes. and the Lutherans and, you know, the subsections. Yes. Yes, Catholics they are, are Christian. Christian. Yes. But they're the more literal. I believe they were a lot more more authoritative, too. More yes. government like. And that's why you have the rebellion, and then you yes. have the subsections that yes. start breaking off because it was too strict. Yes. Um, did I watch the movie with um Russell Crowe? Most Russell likely, Crow. I did. And bro, I'm passion? very bad when it comes to watching movies, so most likely I did not. And let's see, Kuni saying, and my friend Ifo, who is. Nigerian once told me the first church was actually in Africa, but Rome colonized it and diluted it and twisted it, such as at the Council of Nicaea. Nicaea, yes. We all of that, if you've done your history, you know about the Council of Nicaea and what they did when it came to, you know, finally really instilling um those beliefs and understandings when it came to what it was to be a Christian. Because way back when there was no such thing as being Christ like or what that was. It's the Council mm -hmm. of Nicaea. Um and I, I think it's if you actually look up the word Christian and you and you go look up another like origin of the definition, it actually means like a stupid person, which is very which is mm. very interesting. It's like wow, calling mm. Christian stupid, but I'm mm. not calling anybody stupid. Nobody's stupid. That's that's on your right. own to decide to find. We out don't do that you here. Think you stupid He's yourself, so but I'm not. <laughs> we not we not calling that out in particular, but. With all, I mean, with all that being said, I want to get over to the spiritual part because I don't want to be just throwing down all on religion, on religion, religion. We can definitely talk about this, you know, <laughs> on the after show, you know, because I mean, I, I, I'm not being fair because I'm only only speaking on just only a few, if not only just one. Right. Um, right. But when it comes down to being religious, just know that there are sets and there are sets and rules that you um, abide by to be able to be a part of that faith and know. Really got to just just know the ins and out of what that is and how that really impacts you as a person 
so that you mm -hmm. can, you know, appropriately know how to move because you're going to have people on other different sides either agreeing, disagreeing, or showing you that you're being completely wrong, even within your own faith, mm -hmm. and that you need to do this, this, and that. But as you take it on for your own, that's where you also begin that spiritual journey. And now we can get over to spirituality. And mm. did you have anything, oh. Chris, for spirituality? Yes. Yes. I finished Avatar. You did? <laughs> yes. So speaking of spirituality. <laughs> yes. No, it's very true. No, Mr. Barnes is very yes. true. You have to know yeah, how other religions the whole perspective. Function. Yes. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. I'm not that's why that's why I'm saying for me, this is just that's why I'm not getting too much on it. I'm only speaking from the knowledge that I have right now. I'm I'm not gonna say I know every single religion that there is within a world. I I I'm already end up saying that. So I'm not gonna come and say that I'm an expert. I'm only gonna speak on what I know and just go from right there. And that's why I always leave it out there to be like, Well, this is for me to do more research as well as everybody else. But the main thing that you can take away from this is literally just make sure that you do your due diligence and know what you are getting into when it comes to what religion you have and why you're practicing it and why you're doing the things that you're doing with it. That's all. That's all I'm speaking on. Because we can, I can go down all the other different. I could not saying could because I could just go Google stuff and still would have to do more research. But I can go down and just start getting more information for each religion and talk about the ins and outs of the stuff. But I'm, that's not what we're here to do. I'm not here to lecture. It's more so just a back and forth of just like what we know of and what we don't. So, but once again, let's get into this the spirituality piece though. World religion? No, I don't think they did that. Wasn't there a world religions portions of your history course in high school? I actually took I actually oh, he's took joking. the uh, El Camino one. <laughs> so we were the El Camino one. Mm. He said, who taught you history? <laughs> <laughs> at, at this point, at this point, I had to teach my own history because we, we already know what's going on with the history we got now. It was definitely mm -hmm. his story. Whoever was the history teacher from El Camino was definitely telling his story. It wasn't a story that I knew. But mm -hmm. um, but let's go back again with this. And we have more piece. conservative textbooks because they changed the, the curriculum yeah. after we left. The stuff they had, they're aggressive and way more open. And the way they were teaching the religion classes were not as uh, strict and stern <laughs> as got you. Uh, what we got. Yeah, they lose got you. that. <laughs> the curriculum. All right, let's see. I love this point, too. All right, Kuna say, yeah, spirituality, too, has been colonized by super supremacists. It's become mm -hmm. an excuse for cultural appropriation, or although the idea of mm -hmm. direct connection to the truth or divine or whatever um, is nice. Yes, I was a point I, I was going to get into um, as down the line, mm -hmm. but yes, Kundin, I agree because we got look at we have it's every everything that we have <laughs> or that we know about everything that we have and that we know about um, when it comes to at least spirituality and knowing in different you know practices you know it's been it's been trending again everything everything that comes in a trend and that's mm -hmm. a fad is always overused yep. overseen and is used to marketing and to buy into us so like literally once yep put in one particular place and it's like oh i've been doing this forever and then now people's like oh now i want to get in line with my chakras in my um 33rd vertebrae and open up my third eye and get it from the um you know my melanin and all. it's just like literally it's like it gets it's on a trend where it's not really it's more so for the external for everybody to see like oh yeah this is why you know i'm like you know i'm very spiritual you see me and this this and that whereas they're really missing the <laughs> big all my component. <laughs> they're missing <laughs> i'm 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 sorry like i know i got mine on right now and i know she'll be talking but more so in in the aspect of being able to just be like you know i'm on this journey because it's for me and then i'm actually learning more about myself and how i'm growing right. versus literally right. being like oh you have that too you got crystals too oh you're doing this too oh i just started this one too I'm like, <laughs> did you go to such and such over there yeah they you know the crystals like, like, i'm crystal. sorry i'm just speaking on crystals because of the movie? fact that i know so many more people no, yes. that's just on it right now but I mean, I when it comes to spirituality, <laughs> when it comes to a lot of different things, like when it becomes very noticeable and very worldwide, mm -hmm. it's going to get mm -hmm. um, oversaturated, like music and every and a lot of other different things, mm -hmm. and it begins to lose its purpose and what it's meant for. So, of course, it has it, it has its pros and has its cons. And but at least for me, when I know when it came to, I finally knew I was like, okay, I know a little bit more about spirituality. Is is because then mm -hmm. I started to really look more deeper within, like. 
how does that affect me? Like, how do I really see things? Like, what do I see as being righteous? What do I see as being, you know, good or bad or what's right? Mm -hmm. Or how do I, like, what is it, what does it do and help me to become a better person? Like, what things should I do? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, maybe I start doing some more meditating. Meditating is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I know it can be a trend thing. You know, there's yoga. Mm -hmm. there's, I mean, then you also have what I've been doing, at least for me when it comes to practice, I've been doing a lot more sun gazing which that is a very ancient spiritual practice that's been seen within um, Kemet, within um, Egypt and around with the Egyptians, as well as it's been seen with the Mayans, as well as the Aztecs. And not necessarily that's them worshiping the sun, but really understanding the, the symbolism between what the sun represents when it came to a principle and an aspect in a law. Um, not just mm -hmm. like, oh, there's a God within the sun and then that God is going to tell me doing all of this, but more so as in just, oh, you out in there? All right, for sure. I appreciate it. It's the bars. I see you in there. We appreciate you. But Bye, it, it's, 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 it's more so of like, we'll do it like this. We'll, we'll do it from the aspect of, um, if you guys know what intrinsic motivation is and extrinsic motivation, I'm going back to psychology because mm -hmm. I know these terms. Yeah. But intrinsic yeah. being more so you do it for yourself and inside, you're motivated inside to do it versus extrinsically, yeah. you're doing it outside for some type of reward or incentive. So when you're on that spiritual journey, it's, it's more so of you just looking to find what's more for you and how that helps you to grow. And I know I'm saying the same thing over and over, you can stop me too, versus um, extrinsically, <laughs> it's more so of like how like, okay, if I start, you know, meditating and start doing all of this you know how can i get me my best partner how can i get this like how can i end up becoming a billionaire if i manifest the right thing should i pose like this like the like monks do and go um, and all this other different stuff and right gotta just find not doing out the due diligence to just be like i'm i just want to do these things because it's going to help me not only mentally but physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, what we talking about, emotionally, just me as an overall being and a person. He's like, like, let me up in here. But let's see. All right, let's see what y'all got going in here. Yeah, it's, it's become more about self-image and status than sincerity. Yes, I definitely, oh, yeah, definitely. I agree with you with that on, on that, Kundin. It don't matter if you have a lot of crystals. Are you charging them? Are you practicing with them? Are you putting the energy into them so that it can absorb yeah you know, you know what i mean it's a whole practice in that cafe oh happen. mike good to see you yeah mm -hmm. is it is this um it's still good to have teachers coaches and mentors and facilitators though of course yeah. that's, that's why you have spiritual okay. guides who have those people because literally i i personally didn't get to know all these things that i know just based off of just like just me stumbling into things which some of this stuff it did but I literally mm -hmm. would ask, like, I had, I had figures, like, I have my uncles. I had, like, people at my church. Like, literally, some people not yeah. necessarily were, like, the quote-unquote, you know, the Christian Christian that needs to be only the Christian and, like, very strict and stuff like that. But they taught me stuff, like, that was more so that I can apply outside of life within this, in a spiritual way. Not just within of, like, mm -hmm. you're the Christian. This is how you're supposed to walk. No. You are the person, right. and this is a way that you can become a better person, not a better Christian, exactly. or better, you know, hint, hint, whatever it is, but a better person. So, I agree with you on that point, Kuna. That yes, you all, you definitely, mm. you definitely have to have those people and those teachers are there because literally, at the end of the day, I don't know anything at all, and what I know is what I know at the end of the day is that I don't. And the only way for me to continue is to keep doing that is I, I got to be willing to want to learn more and want to know more about stuff. And there's going to be right. people there that's going to pass that down. And eventually, I will end up being that person that's also going to pass things down so that that knowledge and that wisdom continues for someone to either take it or they could just leave it on a shelf wherever in their mind until it finally applies to them when they come across something that happens to them. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's literally how you can, you know, work on that and how things end up going. So let's see. Today I watched a group in Japan. Um, they tattoo themselves with hormones or spirits and try to live up to the image of the spirit they have on themselves. Really interesting. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Huh. Like, because then now you just made me think about, too, um, brother, you made me think about how especially within um native american you know spiritual practices too 
that there's a such things as them having um spiritual guides of like animals and how some people mm -hmm. end up you know embodying different animals whether if it was like a you know a hawk eagle a bear like i mean i don't know if y'all ever seen um brother bear like even though it's like these cartoons may be mm -hmm. funny but like a lot of them have very like no, if, if you really enough. listen if you really listen and watch it's not only for entertainment it actually does end up having really deep and meaningful um perspectives on what it is when it comes to the spirituality religion and of any particular you know um race culture wherever you want to end up speaking on but like it just reminded me of that brother and how that is a, a particular thing and how you know your spiritual animal that's your spiritual guide and it shows you you know how where you things are you supposed to go or how I know what else do I what else do I know? I don't know a lot. That's all I gotta say, y'all. Um I know I don't I don't know a lot. But I don't know I know we didn't get to get to um how these spiritual practices are like your routines and stuff and how that you know applies within your life. But I will say this before we do close. Chris, do you have anything if you wanna add before I do close and we get to the next part? Are we going to uh, discuss the rituals and routines on the after show? Yeah, we can do that. All right. Yeah, we can definitely I'm with do it. That. I'm with <laughs> it. All right. So, with that, y'all, today's show, we've just really just went more into not only what we get to see currently about virus and all other stuff that's going on, but really had a really in-depth, really more so convo when it came to the difference between being religious and spiritual. We may have touched on a lot of the religious and not so much of the spiritual, but at the end of the day, you take it with a grain of salt. You take ownership of whether you're religious or you're spiritual or you're both and how that does apply to you becoming at the end of the day a better person and really living this life you know to the best of your ability to really help and to love all those are around you and with that being said i've been your host avis this has been your co-host chris and from both of us we like to say thank you and those who are going to be watching later for coming to another episode of what's the word wednesday we will see y'all next wednesday with new topics new combos and a lot more probably funniness too but other than that peace one love y'all and we out